Hi, my name is Karthik and I am from executeautomation.com and today we can talk about working with test listeners with Catalan Studio. Alright, so let's get started. Test listeners. Test listeners is a new feature of Catalan Studio introduced since version 5.2 which is the latest version right now and it is a great and flexible way to help you extend your current testing flows. In simple terms, Test listeners are test steps that created based on your own criteria and will be executed when the condition is matched. In a simple term, test listeners are more like test hooks available in other unit testing frameworks such as NUnit, JUnit, MSTest. And even if you watched my previous videos on YouTube channel or in Udemy courses, even in BDDB Specflow we have something called as before scenario, after scenario. Similarly in Cucumber we have something called as before scenarios and after scenarios. So the Catalan Studio has introduced the same concept here such as test listeners where they have different kinds of hooks to run a few conditions before a test starts or after a test ends and before a test suite starts and after a test suite ends. So let's quickly see everything in action and understand how things work. So for that, I'm going to flip to Catalan Studio. Alright, as you can see, I have downloaded the Catalan Studio latest version right now. It's 5.2.0 as you can see here, 5.2.0.1. So I have downloaded that and this is my Catalan Studio here. And if you're wondering where this particular code has been coming, again this code is coming from our GitHub of Exit Automation channel. The source code is available there. You can just download it, clone it, and then you can open within your Catalan Studio and you will pretty much see exactly what we're seeing right here. Other than that, I have also added the Catalan Analytics configuration so that I can push the code to the Catalan Studio website. That's it. That's the only thing I have did here. As you can see, the Catalan Studio is talking to the Catalan Analytics over here. All right, so today we're gonna talk about test listeners. So as you can see, this is a new folder altogether. Well, it was not there before and it is added in 5.2. What is this test listener? As I said before, it's gonna act like a hook. Anyone in our automation frameworks, you can add test hooks to run few conditions like opening a browser before every test starts and closing the browser after a test ends. That's exactly on hook is. So we can see how to create it. It's very, very simple. Just right click the test listeners, go to new, go to new test listener here. That's gonna bring a new pop-up window asking what else you want to generate. Do you need to generate a sample for before test case method? Or do you need to generate a sample after test case method? Or do you need to generate a sample before test suite or after test suite? So these are the four different hooks or attributes available within Catalan Studio Listener to perform these kinds of operation. I'm interested in all these fours to see how things work. So I'm gonna hit OK there. And you can see that the code is automatically generated for me in Groovy. And it has a class like new test listener. And you can see that within this new test listener, we have different kinds of annotations like add before test case, add after test case, add before test suite, add after test suite. So these are pretty much exactly the same thing that we can see in our JUnit or TestNG or NUnit in C Sharp. That's exactly it is. But there is one more stuff available like test case contest. This is kind of very, very interesting. This is a new class which is introduced in Catalan Studio 5.2 where you can see there are different kinds of methods available within test contest. Something like you can get the test case ID during runtime. You can get test case variables during runtime and you can get the test case status of the runtime. So these are some of the cool things that you can use for your reporting purpose. And uh, let's see what are the different kinds of method available. So if I do this test case contest dot, you can see there are other different stuffs available that we can see here, which is really cool. And I'm not going to use these things as of now because my focus today is to, to focus on how we can open a browser and a close browser after every test case is executed. That's super simple stuff I'm going to do today. So I'm going to review all this print line here. So let it be there. No problem. And if I go to my test case, new test case here, and if I go to my script, you can see that in my script, I have this web UI dot open browser to open the browser. And we have this web UI dot close browser method to close the browser. And this is done within my code. What if I push or pull this code from here to the new test listener like this so that for every test case I execute 
I open the browser here after an any test case starts and then I close the browser after every test executes and the test is complete. So I'm going to copy this web UI dot close browser method. I'm going to come all the way to the new test listener and after the test case, I'm just going to close the browser. So I'm going to save that as well. Oops. There we go. So these are the two things I'm going to do. As of now, for test suite, I'm just going to leave it as it is because we have only one test case and eventually we are not using any test suites for now. So I'm just going to leave it as of now. I'm going to save it. And now I have to create a test suite anyways because I want to see the test report within Catalan Studios Analytics, which is something available only if you run the test with the test suite. So I'm going to create a test suite here and let's call this as hook test. I'm going to save it and then I'm going to create a suite collection if I want. But as of now, I guess only one is fine. So I'm just going to add the new test case. Hit OK, which is cool. And you can see the execution information here. So this is fine for just one test case. What if we have two different test cases? Of course, we have to add two different test cases within this particular suite. But let it be here. And of course, I have to add a test suite collection because only then we can execute the test within our Catalan Studio for analytics reporting stuff. So I'm going to save that as well. So it's going to be the hook test suite collection. Hit OK. And within this hook test suite collection, I'm going to add the hook test, this guy, the test suite, and hit OK. You can see I'm pretty quickly running all these areas because we have already discussed in our course. So please go ahead and watch there. And now if I try to execute this test, you can see that it is throwing me a message, which is pretty good because I have not saved it. You can see there is an asterisk there. So I'm going to save all and I'm going to go all the way to the hook test suite collection once again. And if I run this test, hopefully the test is going to run and it's give me a message. I guess I have not updated my Firefox browser. So let's wait for the message to appear. There we go. I'm going to hit no. So that is going to open me a browser. You can see that actually the test right now is running from the hooks. That's the most important thing. Our test actually doesn't have all these stuffs like opening the browser, which was there earlier. As you can see here, we don't really have the open browser and close browser stuff. But actually this is coming because of the hooks. All right. So I guess the test is passed, but there is one test failed. I know why, which is OK. So that's it. So this is the test thing. And now if I go to my report, you can see that there is a hook test. I'm just double click that and I'm going to push the report to the Catalan analytics. So that's going to push all the reports, whichever the test has executed. So right now it is pushing all the reports back to the Catalan analytics and we can analyze the report over there within the Catalan analytics. So let's, let me quickly jump over there. The project is going to be execute automation. That's what I have configured right now. And dun, dun, dun. I guess it's not exit automation. It's test project. Okay. So this is the one which I just executed. And if I click this, you can see it has got failed, which is hundred percent failure. And it has happened because of, uh, Let's see what's happening there. It's for all the tests. If I click that, all right, the root cause is unexpected model dialog. And because of some unhandled exception within the dialog box, the test has got failed, which is okay. I don't really care about that because our intention is just to see if our test is actually opening the browser and things of that nature. So let me, why not change the browser from Firefox because there is an update window coming in. So I'm just going to go to the test suite collection instead of running with Firefox. If I run with Chrome, I'm going to save it. And now if I try to execute this test, maybe this time it's going to open the Chrome and no nagging update Chrome window is going to appear. So the test is just going to execute as if, as is, it's going to execute that. All right. That's good. And then it should open one more, I guess. I think just only one test because I think these errors are coming from Excel sheet. All right, the test got passed this time, no problem. And now if I go to my another report here, 
this is Firefox and this one is Chrome let me push or upload the report once again all right the report is there I guess it was 13 before now if I do like 14 and hit enter yep we got 14 there but why is it still Firefox I don't know should not be Firefox this time at least it should be Chrome hmm this is 15 okay so it has executed the test in the Chrome driver and let's see what happened there so it says unable to set the text Karthik within the input username okay I guess the problem is this the problem is happening because within our test case if I go here to this script it has to open the browser for the next test case but what happened is like this is going to be single test case and the test is failing because if you could see the data that I have within my Catalan studio over here there are an XLS file I guess we have two different rows here so basically within our Excel sheet as you can see here we have two rows the first row is going to do kind of entering the data for the first time and second time is going to enter the second row earlier in our code what happened is like every time we open the browser within this iteration and we close the browser within this iteration which was working fine but right now our test listener is written in such a way that it's going to open the browser only for the first time for the test case and then it's going to close the browser for the next time that's it so it's not going to open the browser for us every time so this is going to be treated as a separate entity and not like opening every time so we can do two things either we can remove the for loop or we can do something like remove the value out from this particular excel sheet so let me delete this guy save it so that there won't be any iteration anymore just the test is going to run only one time i'm going to save it and now if i try to execute the particular test what happens is like it's going to execute the test for us without any problem so i'm going to go all the way and then i'm going to run the test so even if it is working on the chrome or it is working on firefox so even if you're running the test on chrome or firefox it doesn't really matter because it's just going to execute as expected so let's see what's going to happen so it's going to execute the test only for the one time just only for the first time and the test is going to pass without any problem all right seems like the test is coming to an end that's cool and let me refresh this so we have a new report and you can see it has got passed so if i upload the report to the catalan analytics so basically it is going to upload uh, the whole report for us and let me go back here to the Catalan analytics report and let me go to the test project so you can see this time we have a past report so I'm gonna open that so you can see that the test has got passed without any problem so even if I open all the reports you can see uh, the test has got passed without any problem here right so that's the thing so our code earlier was doing like opening the browser and closing browser within the for loop but since we have changed the mechanism with the test listener the code is going to be changed a little bit i'm going to check in the whole code within our github once again so that you can have the same code while you take for practicing after watching this video once again thank you very much for watching this video and have a great day